bond order is just another way of saying if a bond is single, double, or triple. And so a double bond has a bond order of two. Bond strength increases with bond order, which is what uh, you would think. That just says that a triple bond is stronger than a single bond or a double bond. Bond length um, is the, kind of the opposite. On um, bond length, The longest is the single. And if you think about it, um, this is how I reason it, is that in a triple bond, they have to get closer together in order to have all of those orbitals overlap. There's more holding them together. So a single bond is the longest. Okay, here's some questions on that. What is the bond order of this? It's the number three. Greater bond energy, triple or stronger. Maybe I should just do that. Which bond is longer? So fewer bonds is longer. Let's look at an energy diagram um, so that we can discuss more about bond energy and bond strength. See where the energy comes from in a bond. I'm going to start by looking over here what we have is two hydrogen ions that are really, really far apart. And, you know, technically at this line, um, their potential energy is zero relative to each other because they're not sharing at all. As you bring the atoms closer together, and even here it looks like they're further apart, but they, they can start doing some sharing even before they're totally overlapping. So we're bringing, bringing them closer and closer together. This is distance from between nuclei. And as we do, the energy, potential energy, is dropping. Now remember that when potential energy drops, that means they're becoming more stable. On an energy diagram, more stable is at the bottom. High energy means unstable. So as they come closer, they're becoming more and more stable. And then they reach this point that's kind of a minimum here. And this is where the bond is formed. So this is the bond length, essentially. So this distance, that's why this 74, this is 74 picometers, that's the bond length for this um, hydrogen molecule. If you try to shove them closer together than that, then they start to repel. Think of Maybe the electron clouds get two on top of each other, but also the, uh, the nuclei are, are positively charged. They start to repel. So this ideal distance where they're most stable gives you the bond length. And then um, there's another thing that we can do, and that is look at the difference in energy between the bond energy here and when they're totally separate. And this amount of energy is the bond dissociation energy. It is the amount of energy required to break that bond. So there's different ways you can think about the energy um, with bond formation. We could say that as the bond is formed, energy is released, or we could say it requires energy to um, break the bond. Bond energy, and we sometimes abbreviate this just BE, is a measure of bond strength, and it is the change in enthalpy for breaking a bond. So which would you think has the greatest bond energy? Just what you would think. And one way to say that it's the energy to break a bond. That means that when you have a chemical reaction that breaks that bond, energy is released. Well, since this is change in enthalpy, 
you might think that it, maybe we could use that, and we definitely can. It's not the best way to calculate the heat of a reaction, but you definitely can look at bond energies and compare their reactants and products and make a prediction about the heat of the reaction, the change in enthalpy for the reaction. That tells you something interesting that the heat of a reaction is mostly dependent on the energy of breaking and forming new bonds. And so we'll do this, um, we're going to, the change in enthalpy is bonds broken minus bonds formed. And on a test, you would be given a data table. I don't always have this kind where you have to, you know, like look across. Sometimes I just have like a list and you can pull off numbers representing bond energies. So here's a close up of that table showing the different bond energies. Something that's kind of interesting to note and that is important sometimes in reactions is that carbon dioxide has a different number when it's um, when the the C to O bond basically this bond has a different energy depending on if it's in carbon dioxide too too that that's one reason that these are not um, the best way or the most accurate way is because really the bond energy depends on not just the two atoms but what's surrounding as well the first thing you need to do is draw the Lewis dot structures This is why I like this kind of problem, because it requires you to use a lot of things you've learned. The reason you have to do the Lewis dot structures is because if you don't, you may not realize that the um, O2 bond here is a double bond, not a single bond. And if you looked up the single bond, you'd have the wrong energy. Okay, those are um, our reactants and products. And then notice something that um, when we form this water, we don't just form one mo water molecule, we form two. So I'm going to go ahead and write a second one just because it'll help me explain how many bonds we have being broken and formed. And the same thing with this oxygen. Okay, and just to okay, let's let's go ahead. So the react the um, the calculation is done broken minus formed. So I'm just going to make a little table of what's broken and what's formed. and the types of bonds. So we look at our reactants to see what's broken. These, the broken ones are going to require energy um, so to, to break. So on these, I have four carbon to hydrogen bonds. And then I have two oxygen to oxygen. So I need to account for that I have um, two molecules of that and I have to break the double bond in both. On the formed side, the new bonds, I have, this has two C to O and we'll make sure we get the one, the one for carbon dioxide. And then how many O to H? I have four, one, two, two three, four. So I need to account for multiple bonds on a molecule, but I need to also account for having two molecules. So I have four um, there. And then I can look up these numbers, and this is where I use a ta the table like I had at the top. So these are in kilojoules per mole. getting, again, the bond energy for carbon dioxide, the carbon to carbon bond in carbon dioxide. 
Okay, so I've got it organized. And then watch for this, that to calculate this, a lot of times we think it's products minus reactants, but don't do that. Go by broken minus formed. We're really not doing the same thing as getting a number for each reactant and product. This, this is how much energy it requires to um, break these bonds. And so that would be a positive delta H because it makes it endothermic. Anyway, so watch the order of these. It's common to for people to do products minus reactants when it's broken minus formed. And again, I'm this is bond energy. So I'm just going to plug in these numbers up here. 4 times this 411. And I'll put my units out here that this is going to be in kilojoules. The mole is canceled by the coefficient um, that is on these. And I get a heat of reaction of negative 802 kilojoules. And that's for one reaction as written. So it could be put out here. And then we say, does that make sense? Because we know something about this reaction. This reaction is a combustion reaction. And we expect combustion reactions to be exothermic. And this is negative delta H.